bring Paul B. Into Winter in Italy, up against Poland. Handshakes ahead of the match. Handshakes on conclusion. First team to 45. And this really crucial because the winner of this match will go through to the semi finals. Three in a pool. Italy. Marco Sima, Manuel Lambatini, Matteo Betti lost to the People's Republic of China in their opening match. And their team spirit in check ahead of this decider. The team of Poland, Kamil Jaza, Dariusz Pender, and Michal Nalavajek also lost to the People's Republic of China. So that means China are most certainly through. And they've topped the ball, so they'll be through to the semi finals. Only one of these two teams will have the chance to fight for a medal. And this match will determine it. Well, they'll be fencing of a two piece. So that the um, setting up of the chair on the piece we save a little bit of time because don't forget that everybody has to fence everybody. Well, there was a result of the previous match, Poland against China. China won 45 points to 38. Poland scoring 10 more hits than the team of Italy when they came up against the Chinese trio. So on paper, one might expect Poland to be the stronger team in this event. However, it all comes down to the next 45 hits. ideal time just to talk about the classification and just a little bit of uh, the difference for anybody just joining us and I said that uh, earlier that the category A fencers sometimes have to fight uh, class B or classification category B fencer and just a little bit more balance and full trunk movement for the Class A and the B classification are poorer balance uh, with recovery, but full use of one or both upper limbs. So it gives them uh, more range of movement, you could say, in the chair. And that chair, as you can see there, is absolutely static. But the category A Fences. Well, there we can see the first on the piece here, Matteo Betti against uh, Nalwajek of Poland. Matteo Betti, probably, probably the strongest of the Italian team. Saw him claw back some valuable points in their opening match. Nalwajek competing in his first. Paralympic Games. And here we've got a left hander against a left hander in the opening bout. First to five. A total of nine bouts, so that means the match will be decided. First team to 45. Points. Well, if you've got right to right or left to left, it, the chairs are set in a certain way, Heather, but uh, if it's left to right or right to left, they have to change them round, don't they? Well, the platform will have to be altered accordingly. The platform set, the chairs are then attached to it and assist at a 110 degree angle. 
Pedimos que utilize fones de ouvido para não incomodar outros espectadores. Prudente, muito obrigado. Uh, just checking his points working, testing it on his own foot. Now the position setting between the two platforms. The chairs have been fixed. The platform, however, needs to be adjusted. And in Epe, it's the length of the arm held out straight when the point touches outside the opponent's elbow in that position you just saw there. A little different to Foyle and Sabre in the fact that Pepe, you can score on the wrist, the arm, but also for the mask. Foyle, it's purely just the body, so Foyle fences, see the distance a little bit closer and they're set up at the beginning. Yeah, we've seen some very opportune points taken off the forearms, haven't we? And pinpoint accuracy needed there because just the point of the epe just the tip is what registers the point so they've got to get that absolutely online and enough pressure on there to get the point registered so they're just about now ready you can see the three minute time up there and we have seen it go a couple of times all the way down and as they go tactically through the bout, we'll uh, go through why that three minutes is important there. Well, this bout is straightforward. It's the first to five. And after this, the scores will start to accumulate as we get closer to the deciding 45 points. You know, see a little bit later as well how points can be made up as well if there is a deficit and then it's possible to bring more than five points back into the equation. But uh, well, as soon as we start to accumulate points, we'll go into that. First point up there to Betty. Matteo Betty, bronze medalist in the EPE at the Paralympic Games four years ago. Just managed to finish seventh in this year's Paralympic Games. One place better in the foil event, but not quite making it to the semi-finals. A lot of action between these two. Matteo Betty making it a 2-0 advantage over the first-time Paralympian, Mihal Nalavajek. So early points, very important, of course. Every point's important. Nalavajek celebrating his first point of this bout. Nine bouts in total. Every fencer will fence every other fencer on the opposite team. So three fights per athlete. This is the opener. Pretty for Italy, Nala Vajek for Poland. Well, the range of movement that they get on those chairs, like I say, in the category A, it's more. Betty keeping his lead. Making it 3 1. The biggest. Advantage that any opening match could give a team would be 5 0. But Poland already with one, so Italy wanted to get the early lead. But so much will change throughout this, and we'll see as different category fences come up against different fences. And the strongest for Italy up first, Betty. Now Vajek, probably the second of the three for Poland. Yeah, interesting there, because the referee just told Nalvajek to 
just turn a little bit further in to face his opponent. He was a bit too side on, which means the target, of course, was facing away. Double touch. Now, Betty celebrates that because it puts him another point, although it does give a point to both athletes. It does put him one point closer to winning this bout. And there, the opening bout goes to the Italians. Matteo Betti with five victories over Nala Vajek of Poland. And he picks up the two. Heather, you were talking earlier about <coughs> how important it is to look at the overall, uh, uh, the as a team, um, scoring. And uh, how, how important is the first five hits here? Well, it means that now Italy have the advantage and just puts them on the front foot as they progress through this. But so much can change and they actually have their next fencer on will be a category B fencer up against category A for Poland. So Italy will have wanted to get the early advantage because this could be a tougher match for the Italian team. Dariusz Penda of Poland, Paralympic champion from four years ago, up against Marco Sima. Sima, a category B fencer, so has a higher impairment than Penda, and as a result, slightly less range of movement coming from the chair. And that would make Penda the favourite, most certainly not just because of the different classifications, but also because of the sheer medal total, seven Paralympic Games medals for the Polish athlete. Yeah, that's a great experience, isn't it? It really is. And like you say, champion from London. Also from Sydney. Forty-one years of age, penned up. Now got to try and make up this deficit. Three points behind Poland, and they will be relying on Penda to try and pull this back. Double hit, so still the same here. Six-three. Now to Italy, so double hit count in Epe. And there's one back. So 4-2. Italy well, wants to just limit the damage because well on paper Pender the favorite in this individual bout between the two fences a category fencer against the b category fencer and now poland equalize six all and this will be the first to ten this bout will finish when the score Reaches 10, whichever side or both together that is. Well, very equal at the moment, but the individual scores are not reflecting the overall score. 4 1 to Penda over Seema, and that's now 5 to the Polish fencer. Yeah, I said they were relying on Penda just to bring them back into it. Now they're well and truly back in. The crowd roaring in the Carioca Arena. So many matches going on for them to appreciate 
We have men's and women's team competitions happening today. And I think the athletes are just... Yeah, a little bit rattled they, by it, aren't they? More the fact that they can't hear the referee's instructions, and that is important in any fencing competition. And record on guard. And it's now Poland with a lead for the first time in this match. Seven points to six. Seema really taking the defence till he sees an opportune moment, but Penda quick on the attack. Puts Poland two points away from winning this bout. Well, just look how he's turned this around here, Penda. There's another one. Nine, six, one, one away, and seven, one. Pender is winning the match. Look at the overall, though. It's Poland now 10-6 up. And that was a very important match for Poland. They were trailing going into this match and relied very much on Pender to come through and to bring them back ahead. Well, that was fairly straightforward for the Paralympic gold medalist, Aliash Pender. He would have expected to win that bout and managed to turn things around. For the first time, Poland lead Italy 10 points to six. Eight of those points are all in that final bout. And now, bout number three. Emmanuel Lambertini up against Camille Jaza. Jaza will be the category B fencer in the Polish team up against A for Italy, Emmanuel Lambertini. But we saw Jaza hold his own against the category A fencer in the previous match when they came up against China. And that was actually against the new reigning Paralympic champion. So let's see if Poland can maybe maintain their lead with their B fencer. Yeah, Lambertini, the least experienced. He's 17 years of age and in his first Paralympic Games. As you say, Rajaza had a really good match, didn't he, against the Paralympic champion. Can he extend the lead? They're aiming for 45 points. Each team is aiming for 45 points. Total of nine bouts. This the third. First fight for both of these athletes. And the Beast in their second match of the ball. Two matches per team. Well, Shaz are just trying to coax Lambertini into an attack, and he was then ready to pick him off delicately. As Lambertini came forward with his arm. Jaza has less mobility, but he's got the point control and the skill, and he's going to use that to his advantage against the young Italian. Letting Lambertini do all the movement, the 17-year-old competing in his first Paralympic Games, up against a very experienced two times gold medalist in the FA. Getting the first hit now, Lambertini with some work to do. First to 15 in this occasion. Yeah, Rajaza just letting him come on, isn't he? Lambertini just needs to stay cool, really. Getting 
a little bit frustrated. Well, Lambertini making the most of the movement that he has from the chair, trying a coupe to the outside of the wrist of Jada, but just coming up short. Referee asking for Holt, and this could be the position in the chair, and that's a yellow card to Jaza. Well, when you say the position in the chair, just body positioning. Oh! Now a red light, Lambertini catching up. Well, the referee's on either side, keeping an eye on the positions in the chair for the athletes. Another mistake by Jaza will give a point to his opponent. A point he won't want to let go. Are we already halfway through the time allowed for this bout. And Jaza quite possibly just wanting to prevent Lambertini getting more points rather than focusing on getting to 15 himself. Well, this is where the clock comes in, isn't it? So quite happy to let that clock just tick away. Well, he'll be keen to get more points on, but not at the risk of opening himself up. But Lambertini trying to get Italy back into contention. Three points to two between these two. And Jaza maintains the four-point lead that Poland had at the start of this bout. Jaza now two away from sealing this bout into the final minute. And the category B fencer Jaza. 4 3 up over Lambertini, category A fencer. Not what you would expect on paper, but the experience of the Polish fencer starting to show. One Olympic, Paralympic gold back in Sydney 16 years ago. And they're winning the individual bout 5 points to 3 over. Emmanuel Lambertini of Italy and extending the lead that Poland have overall to 15 points to nine. Look at that, just waiting for Lambertini to close the distance. Already with a disengage hit on top of the arm. Smoothly done by Jaza. And there's the overall standings after the first three bouts. So a third of the way through this final match of Pool B. Next one on piece. Marco Kima against Alvijek. And well, it's everything to fight for now because they every point so important. Team up is B category. So, like we said before, that uh, just not quite the same movement in the chair. Nalewiczek of Poland. He's left-handed and. So it's left against right here. Well, let's see if Nalavajek can extend the lead of Poland. Getting the first point on. We would expect in this situation as Sima, the category B fencer. So usually and in all the individual events, would only fence with other Category B wheelchair fences. Oh, very quick there. Novacek gets a second point. So increases the lead for Poland, 17-9. Now three points up. 18-9. Seema getting the first point on. 
But look at that deficit. Eight points already behind for Italy. And Poland just needing one more to finish this bout. Alavajek would be the favourite in this pairing. And he's proving it there. Five points to one. And Poland now have double the points of Italy. A lot still can change in the relay, especially with the different categories. But that one was quite conclusive. A victory for Nala Vajek. Nala Vajek then 5-1 against Kima. Well, that puts them in a commanding lead, doesn't it? Now 20 points to 10. Yeah, it's going to be difficult, isn't it, for Italy to come back on that. But uh, still plenty to fight for. It's not over yet. No, it certainly isn't. And the next match really could turn things around because it's this time that Italy have the Category A fencer up against Poland's Category B. Kamel Jaza for Poland and Matteo Betti for Italy. So if there's ever a point in the match for things to even up or turn around, this could be it. Well, we saw it in the other previous match, didn't we? And it was quite a few points that were brought back. And so they'll be relying, the Italians, on Matteo Betti to try and pull the point differential back. Both so piece being used, so these fences had already started to set themselves up on piece eight. Nine separate bouts. A lot of equipment that needs to be checked on every occasion. And every athlete. In fact, every other athlete in the set order. So the teams have to submit the team order before the competition starts. So the Italians are numbered one, two, and three in this situation. Poland, four, five, and six. And then it follows a set order in which the fences will face the other team. Well, this match will be up to 25. So a good chance then for Matteo Betti to really pull some points back here. And of course, Rajaza knows that. So his tactics will be not to give away points. So he's got to do that though, uh, Betty, within the three minute time that uh, is on the clock. So under a bit of pressure if he wants to pull back lots of points but it is possible. Well, he'll be aware of the score, be aware of the situation that Italy are in. This will be the deciding match in this pool purely because both of these teams are yet to win and this is their final match. The winner of this will go through to the semi-finals. And Poland looking like the favourites at the moment. This now puts a bit of pressure on Betty. What can he do for the Italian team? And he starts it off with a point. Jaza just really trying to make the most of his reach against Betty. Now in this situation. Jaza won't mind if the score is slow to develop because there are only three minutes allowed. You can already see the clock ticking down. But Betty reducing that deficit to just eight points now. Yeah, it's his chance, Betty, to, to really pull this back. They'll be wanting him, needing him to pull this back. 
And of course, now the tactics come in here. As that just will be happy for that time to go and to give a few points away. And picking up points as well. Increases the lead there for Poland, 22. The first to 25 in this bout. And the score will be paused there before the next two athletes come onto the piece. Betty doing his best to try and catch up, but he's got quite a mountain to climb. Yeah, just two points away now, Poland. Need two more points. Well, of course, he knows there that Betty has to come forwards. He's chasing points. Double hit. So now just one point away in this bout. Betty just ahead on their head-to-heads, 5-4. Well, really doing his best, but not making that much of an inroads into the lead that Poland had at the start of this bout. The individual score, six points to four. Matteo Betty over... Mojaza, but it's the overall score that counts, this being the team event. Well, well, double touch ends this bout and keeps Poland in the lead. What well, a strong performance by Category B fence to Camille Jaza up against Category A, Matteo Betty. Betty able to close the distance that bit quicker, but double touches helps Poland to maintain their lead. And we move on through, and after the first five bouts, Poland still lead. A score of 25 to Italy's 17. Next uh, bout, bout six, Emmanuel Lambertini is up there. And Lambertini, the youngster, but every second on the piste here is experience for him against Darius Penda the most experienced. So once again, the Polish team will be hoping that Penda can add to the points here. Remember, it's up to 30 on that board now, and Darius Penda, the champion from London. In the FA, he is up next against the youngest, Vence Lambertini. What can Lambertini do in this situation. He knows he's got a tough challenge ahead. Not going to put Poland in any chance of making it into the semi-final. Well, double touches at this stage will be an advantage to Poland. It just gets them closer to that all-important 45-point score. Yeah, all about accumulation of points here and Penda 
holding on to the lead and just biding his time. Lambertini doesn't want to go forwards because he just knows that the experience of Pender waiting game and just have a look out coming out of the chair there. Just got to keep one buttock in contact with the chair. And they will get warned if uh, there's too much movement in that chair, they'll get a yellow card. Two yellow cards point to the next person. Three minutes allowed. For every bout, the clock always resets, irrelevant of how long the previous bout has taken. And it's Poland. He won't mind the clock ticking down. Nine points, they lead Italy by the young Lambertini. There's quite a challenge on his hands, facing the experienced Pender, and Pender with the advantage, but it's two apiece. Perfect so far in this bout. The first to 30 will hand over the lead to the next two competitors. Yeah, fencing, uh, fencing well, isn't he, Lambertini? And they're just catching Lambertini on his arm as he was trying to retreat from the attack of the pole. And Pender just saying, can we pause a moment? Yes, the crowd settle down yeah settle down again <laughs> it's a lively crowd it really is gonna be great for the finals Pender being awarded another point but the referee just going to check point has gone on the scoreboard and he's yet to confirm Asking the athletes to put their masks on and the point remains. So now Poland back to the 10 point lead they had at the end of the first two bouts. So at the end of the first four bouts. Pender 4 2 up on Lambertini. The experience showing first. Won a gold medal, the pole, 16 years ago. But Lambertini not phased by his opponent, just trailing by one point on the individual tally. Nine points on the team tally. And if Lambertini is going to put Italy in the lead, he's got to score 10 hits in 45 seconds. Very unlikely, and Pender doesn't even give him the opportunity to get close. Five yeah. victories for Darius Pender, three for Emmanuel Lambertini. The overall score, Poland leading 20 points to Italy's 30. So Poland in a commanding lead here against Italy, just three contests left. Well, this is proving that quite possibly the results for both the Italian team and the Polish team against China is reflective of the strength of the two teams. We saw Poland score a total of 38 points to 45 in their match and Italy only a score of 28 to 45. So, as expected, Poland looking the stronger team. Kamal Jaza, the category B fencer, comes on now against the equivalent for Italy, Marco Sima. So this is the only time the two category B fencers will fence someone from the equal category in this match. In that sense, I'd expect it to be that bit closer.
Oh, Jaza, 31 years of age, but his first Paralympic Games he didn't even compete in the World Championships until last year. So quite fresh to the scene of wheelchair fencing. Up against the slightly elder Marco Sima. Marco Sima never won a Paralympic medal, but so close, finishing fourth on three separate occasions, including the individual foil just a few days ago. Jaza with the early point. And in this situation, definitely more pressure on Sima. And so he only has three minutes to reach 15 points. And that's before Jaza reaches five. And Jaza already 2 0 up. Yeah, they've very much got a chase, haven't they, Italy? And of course, the Poles know that. Second point up to Jaza. Scoreline now really starting to extend for Poland. 13 points ahead of Italy. And Jaza making it 14, needing just one more to end this bout. Marco Sima yet to score a point against the fellow Category B competitor. And he doesn't, he doesn't have a chance. The young Kamal Jaza at his first Paralympic Games really playing a significant part in the Polish team. Five hits to Marco Sima's zero, and extending the lead quite significantly for Poland. A lovely hit from Jaza in the crease of the elbow of Sima, who hadn't fully extended on his attack. Well, now you can see it. I was going to say that uh, Poland now 35-20 leading this and uh, just two bouts still to come. Well, with only two bouts left, it puts Poland just 10 away from the ending score of 45. Manuel Lambertini of Italy. We'll have to do some serious work against Mihal Nalavajek if Italy are going to have any chance of fencing in the semi-finals. Think he realises the pressure? Think he might? Well, right now, he'll just be focusing on the bout at hand. And that will be his opponent, Mihal Nalavajek. We'll just have to see it. There's another pool fight. This is a team event. But it is the pools nonetheless. The knockout will begin after this. But as we have mentioned earlier, three teams in the two pools. This is pool B. And only the top two teams will make it through to the semi final. The bottom two. Bottom one, sorry, from this pool will fence the bottom team from pool eight to decide who finishes fifth and sixth. So just two bouts remain between Italy and Poland. On the piece now, Emmanuel Lambertini against Mihal Nalabajek, both competing in their very first Paralympic Games here in Rio. Well, both of these are Category A fences and they grip the side of the chair to get leverage and, uh, and to 
uh, for their movement so they can move well and look at the um, range of movement that they have. Well, only three minutes and quite a tough ask for Lambertini. Trailing by 15 hits. Tanavajek will be aware of that. He'll be feeling more relaxed. He can afford one or two mistakes, but he'll want to reach the score of 40 as soon as possible. And in the hope that he can get there without letting Lambertini have too many points on target. But at this stage, this late stage in the match, not so important. Just a, a mini timeout for Nana Vajek as he tightens the fastenings on his legs to keep him in position on the wheelchair. Athletes who have difficulties due to their impairments or any muscle cramp or spasm as a result of their impairment are allowed time to rectify that. So the referee just allowing Nana Vajek to reposition yeah, and also Nalavajic, because he can't grip the chair with his right hand, he's strapped to it. He has a strap, special strap, and uh, it's so that he can get the pulling action and get the momentum going as well. Lambertini, quick off the mark. The first point going to Italy. Needs 15 more if he's going to take the lead. At this late stage. Nala Vajek really stretching out of his chair, trying to reach Lambertini, but Lambertini keen to defend, not able to defend that attack though from the Polish fencer. One apiece, the difference remains at 15. Well, now you can see the range of movement that they're getting because in defense and attack, and that was a double hit there. But that's good for Poland because every time it's just one step closer to that 45, well, 40 for this match. And again, Nala Vajek, just repositioning, making sure he's got very secure position in his chair and the chairs you can't see under these aprons but the chairs are fixed securely to the platform and the distance between the two fences will remain exactly the same throughout the whole bout very quick off the mark Lambertini with Another attack. A close match in these two fences. Two apiece. Strong carp parry from Lamartini, but not able to on the second attack of Nalavajek and giving both fences a point each in that double ensuring everything's tucked in nowhere for the point of the epee to get caught but also ensuring that the target area is equal on both fences the skirt drops down too far that does increase obviously the target area for the opposing fencer oh lovely stop hit on the arm for Nala Vajek he knows that was a sweet hit. And a coupe attack to return from Lambertini, putting it four apiece in this individual bout. But it's the overall score that will count. And another double remains with Poland. 15 points ahead of Italy. Manuel Lambertini and Mihal Nalavajek tying on five apiece. 
But Lambertini not able to change the scoreline at all. And it's going to be an incredibly tall order for the final bout to stop Poland now. Those double touches were great news for Poland. And they just got ever closer to the 45 points thereafter. Yep, almost there now, five points away. And for Italy to try and make that up, 15 point differential. It's gonna take some pretty nifty uh, fencing and they've uh, got to do it within three minutes. And it's gonna be very, very difficult to do. Remember if that three minutes goes beforehand. So of course that means that uh, Penda just doesn't need to give away points, but I'm sure he'll be going for the five points as well. The most experienced on that team, Darius Penda. Twenty-five points, Italy. Forty points. This is the last bout in this team match. This will decide who will go through with China to the semi-final. should be just a matter of straightforward situation for Poland and making it even clearer with the opening touch for Penda just four points away from a semi-final place for the team of Poland Betty won't give up the fight but it's looking more and more likely that Italy will be fencing for fifth or sixth position in the runner-up match. And now it's just a matter of competitive spirit that Betty will be trying as very hardest for every point he can score. Darius Pender. Yeah, just two points away now. Even double hits would be an advantage for Pender. You wouldn't mind that. And uh, there's another point. One point off then. Uh, Semi final place. And it's a double hit, and it's all over because it's 45 points to 27, and that is the final score and it's Poland that go through to the semi-final match. Well Matteo Betti didn't manage to even keep the score even losing 5-2 to two over Davies Pendo of Poland. And I think it was already pretty conclusive before that final bout. Something incredible would have had to have happened in those three minutes were to win. So the result of that match 